A lot of people have asked for a video about uploading files to Firebase Storage, so here it is, uploading files from XamarinForms.net MAUI or basically any c -sharp application. Here is what we'll see in this video. I have this little sample app with a upload button, a progress bar, and there is a label that you can't see right now. If we click that upload button, we can select the file and it will upload that to Firebase Storage and it will give us back the URL where we can download that same file that we just uploaded. That is what you're going to learn in this video. Let's go check it out. Now, before we go dive into the code, we have to go to our Firebase console because we need to set up a project for this. Uh, maybe you already have a project, then you can reuse that one, but I'm going to add a new project for this uh, specifically. So I'm going to click add project here. By the way, you can see a couple of other push notification samples here. I got some good videos on push notifications as well. So if that's something that you're interested in too, uh, please check out the corners of your screen. It should pop up right now, or there's a link down in the video description below. Um, I'm going to add a new project and you can name this anything you want. So I'm going to use this sample storage, something like that. Um, click continue. Now you can hook this up to Google Analytics so you can know more. You can do A-B testing, all these kinds of things. Um, I'm not going to do that for now, but if this is a real life project, then it might be something that you're interested in. And here it's set up a couple of resources for us. Um, so it's just provisioning because this is running on the Google Cloud. So this is just provisioning a couple of resources for us. Um, and whenever it's done, we can go into the dashboard for this project. Now here on the left, you can see all kinds of services that they have uh, within Firebase here. I already also got a video on the real-time database. So be sure to go check that one out as well. Uh, but in this case, we're going to focus on the storage. And if you're gonna go here for the first time, there's all kinds of resources down here to help you. Um, but I'm just going to click the get started here and create a bucket. That's what it's called. Basically, a bucket is the, the, the thing where you're going to upload your files. Um, I think you can use this all for free um, up to, I don't know, one gigabyte of storage or something. Um, at least check out the limits for that exactly in the documentation. There are some limits, but you can go pretty far just using this for free without any billing. So that's pretty cool. Now, of course, um, the security rules. So you can use this with authentication as well. I don't have a video on that yet at the time of recording. Um, but if that's something that you're interested in, please let me know down in the comments and I will make a video on authentication for Firebase and also maybe with the combination with storage so that you can authenticate people from your app and only let authenticated people upload something to your storage. Now, the rules and the security is very important, of course. What I'm going to do is implement a little hack so I can um, just focus on the storage part and uploading files and not so much about the authentication. Beware, do not do this in production because then everyone can upload to your um, storage and that's probably not something that you want. So um, I'm going to do that in a little bit. I'm going to click next and we can set the storage cloud location. Um, so I'm going to click West Europe, but you probably want to choose something that is close to you so that the uploading goes a little bit faster. Um, so click done and then it's going to create the default bucket. Uh, now, if you have a paid plan, you can have multiple buckets. So you can see that kind of as a database or multiple databases then um, where you can you know, um, upload your files to. But in this case, it's not really a database. So they're calling it a bucket. Um, um, so that's how that works. Now it's setting up the security rules and then it takes me to my bucket. Um, first thing I'm going to do is go over here to the rules, like I mentioned, and um, here you can set up the rules if that's what you want. But here a simple hack to test um, without authentication is to uh, make this equal. So request auth is equal to null. So it doesn't take into account authentication. Um, and then anyone can just do that. Now, again, I want to stress do not do this in production. Um, let me know if you want to know about authentication. If you can't figure that out yourself, let me know down in the comments and I'll make sure I will create that. Um, but this is just to implement it for now. Um, now, if you go back to files right here, we can see that little bucket. Um, remember this URL right here. Um, we need that in a little bit to point our um, client to, and that's the way where we are going to upload our files. So um, we need this one as well. Um, and for the rest, we don't really need to do anything here. So I'm gonna, just gonna copy this link actually, and I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio to implement the actual code. So here we are in Visual Studio 2019 for Mac. On the left, you can see a file new Xamarin Forms application that will be the sample app for this video. And on the right, you can see that same app running on iOS. Now, the thing I'm going to show you is entirely in the shared project. So out of the box, this automatically works for um, iOS, Android, all the platforms that are supported for Xamarin Forms, UWP, you name it. 
um, it will just work all the same. Um, I'm going to implement a couple of things here. So first off, let's start with this title right here, Firebase Storage Sample. Um, and I'm going to remove all the labels and I'm going to add a button first uh, with the text upload and implement a clicked handler for that. And what I'm going to do next is also have a progress bar. Um, you'll see why in a little bit. Well, how many reasons can you have to have a progress bar, right? It's going to show you some progress. Um, progress bar. Uh, I'm going to give that a name so I can reference it in my code behind. And I'm going to add a little label here also with a name, which is going to be the download link. Um, all right. so. I'm going to save this. Um, there is an issue in my machine where hot reload doesn't work at the moment, so don't worry about that. Normally, whenever you save that XML file, the XAML file, it will automatically show up in your running app with the XAML hot reload, which is um, totally amazing, but I need to restart the application in a little bit because um, what I'm going to do now is install a NuGet because of course, there is a plugin that will make our life so much easier. So I'm going to go to our solution explorer and I'm going to click on the shared project, right click, and I'm going to say manage NuGet packages. And then I'm going to search for Firebase storage and it should come up with firebasestorage.net. Now, I'll be honest, um, it, the package is a little bit older. The last update is from 2018, which is at the time, it, actually November 2018. So at the time that's three years old, but it still seems to work. So that's kind of something. Um, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of packages out there that do things with Firebase um, in C Sharp. So, you know, this is, this is what we got. And um, let's just use this one add package and it's going to install this on our little project. So we're going to wait for that a little bit. Um, actually, while we do, let's just go over to our code behind. So I'm going to go to our solution explorer and in our main page, the main page XAML.cs, um, we can see that our button handler is implemented. I just have to accept these license agreements here. Um, so our button clicked handler is implemented here and what we're going to do first is get a photo from our photo gallery is a weight examine dot essentials dot media picker um, dot pick photo async. So this is just going to allow us to pick a photo from the gallery uh, or anywhere and we can use that photo to upload that to um, Firebase storage. Uh, I'm going to have to make this a sync in order to make that work. Um, so also I have a video on the media picker in detail as well. It should pop up on your screen right now. So be sure to check that one out. Uh, let's check if the photo is actually picked. So we don't run into any unexpected crashes. So if it's, uh, well, if it is null, then we're going to return. Um, else we're going to continue. And what we can do now with the package that we just installed, the Firebase storage.net, you can see here at the top that it's now successfully installed. So let's start implementing some code here. We can do new Firebase storage. Now it's probably not going to know this, but we're going to use IntelliSense to figure that out for us. See, we need to add using Firebase.storage. It will add that here at the top. And now we can use this new Firebase storage. Um, and what we need to do is um, configure here a storage bucket. So that's the thing that we just set up, right? Um, and mind you, the URL has GS um, colon slash slash, um, kind of like a, a web URL, um, but we do not need this. So you just need the, the rest of the URL. You don't need the, the little protocol thingy right here. Um, so now it will know what bucket to use. Um, and we're also going to specify some options, which is going to be particularly useful whenever you are using the authentication. Um, so here we are going to say new Firebase storage options. Um, and we can just initialize it like this. And you can see it has the auth token async factory. So that's where you can put in the auth token. Like I said, let me know if you want to know about how to use this with authentication. Um, we can say throw on cancel. We can say HTTP client timeout. So there's a couple of options here that you can use. Um, let's just say um, we're going to do throw on cancel. It will then throw an exception whenever you cancel the upload or maybe something happens. So let's set that to true. Um, and from here, it's kind of awesome because they implemented a fluent syntax to um, kind of upload your file. So what we can say here is child and that will create a subfolder. So that will create a folder inside of our bucket. Um, and now we can say, um, did you subscribe? 
and we can just do more ch children here. So um, to my channel yet. I don't know who wants to name their folders like that, but I certainly would love you to subscribe to my channel. So if you haven't done that already, please do. Um, and then whenever you're done, you can say, well, you still have to name the file. So that's also a child. Um, and you can say uh, my photo.png. You probably want to check if it's actually a PNG or a JPEG or something like that. Actually, I think we can just say um, photo file name. So let's just use that. And what you can then say here, you can see all the, the other APIs. So we can delete async as well. We can get the download URL for uh, downloading the image again. Um, we can get some metadata whenever, you know, you can not use this only for uploading, but also for downloading and getting some, some metadata. Um, but what we want to do is to do the put async. Um, so we're going to actually put that on our bucket. Um, and then we can just say await, we need to um, do the stream. So we can say await, open read async, there we go. So we need to do this. And now it will get that stream from the photo and it will put that on our bucket. Uh, I don't know why this is not happy. We should await this probably. So await that. Oh, no, we don't want to await that. Wait, because what I want to do is put this into a task. So we're not going to await it right now. We're not going to run it right now because what is a really cool thing we can do is that we can also track the progress. So we can say task dot progress dot progress change, which is an event handler. Um, and we can add something to that. Now, this is just another event handler. So let's say, um, well, sender and um, um, I don't know, arcs, something like that. And we can do that in line, or of course, you can create a um, separate method for that if that's what you want. Um, and here we can say do our progress bar dot progress is args dot here we go percentage or position or whatever. So you have a couple of things here to track the progress of the file upload. Now, in this case, I think it's going to be pretty quick because I have a good upload here and um, the image is not going to be that big. So it's probably going to be super fast, but this will just give you an idea on um, how it's going. Um, and so we have that in place. And what we can then do is say var download um, link is await task. So now the task is actually going to run. And I think our task will automatically um, return kind of like the download URL. Um, so we can do now our download um, link. Oh, the naming is a little bit confusing. But this is my label that I put on my page um, dot text is download link. Whoops, the other link. See, this is very confusing. Um, but this is a string. And I think this will return the um, the link that we can download the image from. So maybe you have a use case where you immediately need that link. Um, and you can capture it this way. But you can get it um, later as well. If you, um, you know, from the APIs here from the Firebase storage, um, we could get the download URL as well. Now we have implemented all this. So let me quickly stop and restart the application and see how this app actually works in action. So what we expect to see is a very simple UI where we can just click the upload button, we can pick an image, and it will upload that image to um, our Firebase bucket. Easy as that easy peasy, right? It isn't a very complex um, little piece of code. Here, our app is coming back up. And I'm going to click the upload button right here, it will come up with the images. So let's do these lovely flowers right here, we're going to upload that you can see the progress bar fills pretty quickly. And here you can see um, the download URL for our image as well. Now let's quickly hop over back to our um, Firebase console here, I'm going to reload this. And you will see that here in our bucket that we just mentioned, we now have subfolders with did you subscribe to my channel yet. And here is our image that is how you can upload images from Xamarin Forms or .NET Maui or any other C Sharp program to Firebase storage. I already mentioned it, but there is a couple of things to consider here. So this plugin is a couple of years old. Um, so I'm not sure if it's still maintained. I see there is still activity on the repository, but um, you never know what that means. And I, I really couldn't find any other libraries that do this. And then you have to do all kinds of advanced stuff with um, rest APIs, Google has some C sharp libraries out there, but they're not that easy to use. Um, if I missed any library that you know, is there, please let me know in the comments because um, I would be glad to learn about some 
some new stuff here. Um, and the other thing, of course, is we need to use the authentication. Um, so let me know in the comments if that is something that you're interested in. But other than that, I mean, this plugin still works. So, you know, as long as it works, then it's fine, right? Um, and um, yeah, just, just use it. And whenever it stops working, then you'll have to worry about it then. But at least now you know how to upload files to file-based storage. Thank you so much for watching again one of my videos. Please click that like button if you have liked this video, actually. Um, please check if that subscribe button is already lit up. If not, please click it so you'll be subscribed to my channel and my content will come to your feed automatically. Now, like I already mentioned, I have videos about other Firebase stuff. It will pop up on your screen somewhere here. So be sure to click and check that out. And I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.